Hello there guys, how's it going? I uh, hope you're all doing really, really well. In this video, I've got just a little bit of a story for you really, something a little bit different to my usual videos, but it's something all the same that I wanted to share with you, just in case it resonates with anybody out there. So uh, just recently, I've been going through a bit of an astro slump, or so it would seem, either owing to the weather or whatever it's been, but I feel like there's been a, a bit of a lack of inspiration going on almost. So I decided to take things uh, almost down to a formula, if you will. And it started off with me looking through a lot of my old images, which I keep archived on uh, an old hard drive. So <laughs> basically, I was going through loads and loads and loads of images right from when I first got started, basically, in astrophotography. And um, I wanted to look for my absolute favorite shots that I've taken recently uh, and try to apply that somehow into giving myself some more inspiration for future images and i came up with these four favorite shots really i tried to narrow it down as much as i could so the first of them was this image right here the cocoon nebula shot in broadband light with my rasa 11. Uh, this was last season really really pleased with that shot best cocoon i've ever taken by a mile ngc 6914 and again even if i do say so myself a really tremendous looking shot i think it's it's just got something about it that i absolutely love uh another one vdb 152 probably potentially my favorite shot that i've ever taken uh again this was the rasa 11 and a, a one shot color camera again what can i say it's it's very it's an image that makes me happy and just recently, this one did the uh, the same sort of thing. The Bubble Nebula, Lobster Claw, Northern Lagoon, all this beautiful dark nebulosity, an open cluster. There's a lot going on. But I think it's just something about these images that kind of really resonated with me and made me feel that urge to, uh, to really plan a new target once again. And I spent some time thinking about what exactly it was. And... Uh, Really, I think I narrowed it down to the fact that these have all been shot in broadband light. So why that's, I think, important, at least to me, is it gives them a certain quality. Um, a softness, if you will, or a delicacy, almost, for want of a, a better word to explain it. Um, but there is something about shooting in broadband for me that you just don't get when you're shooting narrowband. That's not to say that narrowband images can't be beautiful, because they certainly can be. I'm not trying to argue uh, against that. But for me, as I say, just generally speaking, it seems to be that shooting in uh, broadband makes me happier, generally. Now, you can see I've got an awful lot of images on my screen of the Heart Nebula right here, and this was the second part kind of, of my uh, plan in trying to figure out what exactly I was going to do the next chance, uh, chance I got with Clear Skies. And uh, as I was going through these old images, I noticed one particular target kept cropping up again and again and again. And, you know, if you're anything like me, um, you've probably got some go-to targets that you'll do just year after year after year. And it's like, you know, visiting an old friend in the sky kind of thing um and you want to see them every single season for me you know it's the rosette nebula the orion nebula the pleiades this you know the heart nebula that kind of thing there are these objects that you know you, you just you're going to go back to year after year i've made peace with that you know what i mean long since it's okay uh, i i definitely don't have a problem i think um <laughs> but here it is you know what i mean 12 different shots through uh, many different seasons of astrophotography and none of them, I like them, don't get me wrong, but none of them really scratched the itch for me. So I decided to apply the two things, it seems, that uh, I've been really enjoying. So shooting in broadband and then shooting, a, you know, a favourite target again, but this time trying to do it in a different light, quite literally in a different light. So rather than shooting once again, making another number 13, Heart Nebula shot in uh, in narrowband. I've decided this time I wanted to go after it in broadband to try and replicate that kind of softness, that beauty almost, if you will. And I think that I did it. So here is the image that I've just completed tonight. 
just a couple of hours ago so I this is a process through that I've done and I'm really happy with it I'm not even going to bother touching this anymore I don't think um Melot 15 the heart of the heart nebula so a target I've shot many many times before and it's definitely my <laughs> my best image of it I'm so happy with this shot I have to say um there's even features in it we identified these actually uh during a previous live stream where this kind of began as a bit of a test seeing if I even could shoot this target with the uh, just a broadband filter through a f10 schmidt cassegrain my edge hd11 and sure enough we discovered during a live stack something popping up here and as you can see it's now got some structure some form to it you can really see something there at the end of that little triangular asterism if you will those three bright stars at the base of uh, melot 15 right there so if you just follow the mouse cursor we go these three and you can see something you know pretty notable is right there it's not present in any of the shots that i've took at least you can see that same asterism in uh, in narrowband or dual narrowband or whatever method you want to talk about kind of thing it's just not there that same region so even you know imaging something you've shot so many times before can still throw up surprises and i just found that in itself quite inspiring uh which i'm very happy to say <laughs> at this point um but yeah basically i think the upshot of this is figure out what makes you happy um as simple as that might sound it might sound you know really silly simple but i think for the longest time i could just get caught in my own head about what i'm going to do this next clear night and i always feel like i have to have some sort of a uh, new thing going on but it's okay to go back and shoot your old favorites and uh, maybe apply a different twist to them so that's what i've done as i say here it is the image that i've taken and i'm very very happy indeed with it all in broadband light this is 325 one minute shots and it has that particular quality that i was talking about with those other shots and i think it is all just down to shooting in broadband it's got that delicate nature to it i think um as i said i think i explained this earlier but um narrowband shots can be extremely beautiful don't get me wrong but they, they definitely by their nature are more harsh uh in the representation of a target and for me it's just me uh you might be the same you might be the total opposite but i really get something out of seeing targets displayed naturally if you will i know this is <laughs> heavily stretched it's necessarily not what you would see just with your eyes kind of thing but this is the light that reached the uh, the sensor you know no filtration this is just what came in from space that's got something to it i really think so anyway i found this one uh, an interesting endeavor uh it's given me a lot to think about about how i want to do things in the future what sort of targets i want to go after uh and i would love to hear if you have the time if you're still here with me which uh, I think sometimes is a bit of a miracle given how much I waffle on uh, as I'm doing even right now but if you are still here with me and you don't mind spending a moment I would love to hear what you do personally you know what the things that make you happy in astronomy what keeps you coming back season after season after season even when sometimes it's very hard to do so you know what I mean owing to either bad weather or whatever it might be just life getting in the way that kind of thing what is it that keeps you coming back and uh, sometimes reigniting that fire what have you done for that so uh been a useful experiment for me uh, i thought it might be an interesting little story for some of you out there and uh, even just <laughs> retelling it to you uh, i've found useful uh, and i hope that you've enjoyed the video so i won't keep you any longer thank you very much indeed for watching as always i really appreciate your time and your support look after yourselves guys and i'll see you in a future video hopefully sooner rather than later so until then clear skies